I was born here in Key Cocker, right here on this island. Okay. Actually, right here on this property. <laughs> uh, at the current moment, there's 88 cats with the baby that just came in a couple of, uh, like a month or so ago. Actually, I fished the cats out of the water. I discovered that people were throwing them in the water to drown. And so I fished them out uh, uh, 13 years ago, a little bag of, of little kittens, and uh, some of them had already died. And I saved the others, and I figured I would um, find them homes. It never happened, and they just kept coming. So today we have the 88 cats. Um, well, the government um, puts poison in the environment. If they feed the dogs uh, poisoning meat. Uh, if they find the cats as well, too. And um, so they do that once a year to control animal population. That's their idea. And the animals have like a hor horrific death, and after that, they just pick them up and throw them in the garbage. Yeah, so the birds sometimes would eat it and the cats eat it as well. Right. I basically put this together myself 13 years ago and we never have the funding to so many cats that keeps coming and the food that you have to feed them and they get ill, you have to take them to the doctor. So I was never able to reconstruct, you know, something new. So it's always patching up the holes and stuff like that. But it's uh, unpatchable now, I believe. <laughs> repair you know build a new cattle for the animals the cattle is basically from this side of the street all the way to the waters and um i would just uh, elevate this and uh, so they could have little places to run and hide make it nicer for them and put new roofing but each roofing material costs like 81 dollars per roofing so it would be a, quite a lot to you know money to get that fixed um we i spay the cats uh, that come in um at two months of age so they're all fixed here uh, we just fixed the last little guy that came in so at two months of age, I would have to take them to the city and that becomes expensive as well to cost like $200 to get a female done and a male $180. Yeah, so that's costing us a lot of money too. I had to get a loan from the bank to um, try to do it, but it needs to get done. Um, at the time that, uh, that the cats on this area came in, um, I didn't have a place to put them or the money to finish the, these rooms that I was planning to rent out. So I just put the cats in that room. But I feel that I would want to have them outside where, you know, they could see the birds and more ventilation. So finally, I'm just, I said, you know, it's time to get it done. So I just had to borrow the money from the bank. And that's, we're going to remove these cats from the inside door, uh, places here, the catteries. And those are two catteries that are going up. Yeah, well, the hostel, the hostel uh, part of it was, my idea came about with, uh, you know, it being so expensive to take care of the animals and all that. And I inherited the property from my dad. Um, and I said, well, I can't live in all the house. You know, the house was a big house. This was our home. You know, all our brothers and sisters lived here when they were little and they all moved out. So after dad passed, it was just my mom and I. And I said, I thought to myself, uh, perhaps maybe people would like to come and stay, you know, in a nice, beautiful place close to the water. And the money just goes back into the, the work that I do with the cats. So basically the hostel is just for that idea. The money just funds, the money from the hostel just funds the, um, animal welfare part of the business yeah so we also have a spay and neuter program that we do throughout belize we invite vets to come and stay here and in exchange we give them a free place to stay and the money goes from the hostel goes into buying anesthesia and we fix dogs and cats so this way there's less cats you know that can't get homes you know less cats suffering and so i would be getting less cats which i can't take care of all the cats even if i wanted to mm -hmm. so uh, we do that for people that don't have the income and cannot take the cats uh, to a vet and so forth or either the homeless animals we do um, trap neuter and return it's called where you would set uh, traps in the environment with food and the animals would go in to eat it they would get trapped in there we would bring them and the vets would get them fixed and then we replace them again after i would say that the money that comes in is sufficient to feed the cats now before the hostel i was saying to myself every day oh my god where am i going to get the money to feed the cats so the money that's coming now at least the cats could eat i could always buy the food but you never have enough to build any kind of new structure like this, like I was saying. Or like if any other expenses come up, like the cats get ill, take them to the vet, you know, a surgery, this and that. Mm -hmm. But for the food, during busy season, which is a few months, you three, four months per year, we do have uh, the money coming in and at least we could get the food for the animals. After the busy season, um, we have like six months or more of no one coming here. Then the problem starts, where am I going to get the money for the food? So. Um, it's a matter of you know trying to it, it's nice when you get the busy season and try to like save a couple of pennies on the side for food 
during the six, seven months that we have no one coming here. We have a, what's called a volunteer vacation program that I created a few years ago, where um, if the, we have a, like a long term and a short term um, vacation, um, volunteer vacation program. So if somebody could come here for a couple of weeks and we will ask them to give us uh, a couple of hours a day to help with the cats or with whatever they want to help with at the hostel or in the yard or with the dogs. And we would reduce their, 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 um, the fee for staying here. Uh, for people that want to stay longer for a month, two months or more, we have them stay here for free. We give them a bed to stay for free in exchange for their help uh, three to four hours per day. On the island, um, not that I know of. Uh, I mean, most most um, most of the cats, uh, the lifespan of a cat here on the island would be something around six months, because see, people, uh, apart from the government putting poison to kill the dogs and sometimes the cats as well, um, people don't like cats on this island at all. So, you know, they wouldn't adopt the cats and uh, they wouldn't take the cats in to feed them. So they would poison the cats, either throw the cats away in the water, the kittens, if they could find them poison them some people throw hot water on them uh you name it yeah so you know it's really not a place where people welcome cats so um i guess i'm one of the only places that would do the work with cats here on the island but as much as you want to you know how many cats could you take care of you know it's like it's, it's very expensive oh my god i don't even want to think about it um they would die they would die, nobody would want them. I mean, and they're already used to people's attention and love and affection. Um, sometimes I think about that a lot. It keeps me awake at night, really. Um, I thought that if anything would happen to me, what would happen to the cats? Because nobody would take care of them. They probably would just open up the door and they would just run off on the street. And people, you know, looking for love and attention and people don't understand that. So they would probably just die from starvation or from people poisoning them or whatever. Yeah, so... Yeah, we have a, um, we have a um, snorkel tours that we do, and we different tours. We have uh, snorkeling the whole Chan Marine Reserve, and part of the money. My brother is the one who takes people out, and part of the money would go towards the cats. So they would take them to the whole Chan Marine Reserve for a half day or a full day tour. We do fishing trips as well. Um, we also do tours uh, uh, to the Blue Hole, and um, tours by airplane if people just want to fly over the Blue Hole several things of that nature and then a portion of that just goes back to the animals as well okay uh, uh, 22 beds we have 22 beds yeah okay so part of it is uh we have a couple uh two uh three now that are uh, private and um the others are dorm beds a 10 bed dorm a six bed dorm a four bed dorm beds yeah okay mm -hmm. here's in the 10 bed dorm um we have the little common area and we have a nice big kitchen um we have the kayaks that we give out to the customers to use for free as well. Lots of hammocks in the yard, the dock to hang out, watch the sunset. They could swim from the dock as well. We have bicycles, although the bicycle is not for free, but it's like really, we just got those and that money we go towards as well, funding the cats, their food and stuff like that as well. And um, although it's not for free, the bikes, because they're so expensive in Belize, each bike costs us like 500 Belize dollars. So that's a lot of money for Belize. Um, so we would charge like $5 an hour for rentals. And if they want it for the day, we reduce the fare. You know, it's like $10, $15 a day if they wanted to rent it for the day. Um, heading towards opening up, it's always been one of my dreams. I always love art. So we're, we're working on a little project that's gonna be called Cans for Cats. And so that little, we're, we're just, I'm just recycling all the cans that I used, uh, used up the cat food. Uh, so kind of a lessening my, my carbon footprint, footprint like they say and then that's just going to go into making art uh, we had a volunteer here that's already working on it and um, we're going to continue doing that and then hopefully you know that's going to help us out with the, with, uh, the continuing to feeding the animals with that money for a slow season when you know when there's no tourists renting the place although the animals are senior cats you know this is like a hospice for cats now because they're all over 10 years old uh, they're all up for adoption if people want them people want to give them a home so of course most people don't want to adopt them because they have medical issues and it's going to cost them money but they're here for that reason but if people like them and they want to take them home there is always up for adoption so all the cats are uh, they're separated we separate the cats by uh, 12 no more than 14 cats per room and this just reduces the stress of the cats and then some of the cats they don't get along with our cats they fight so we have to try to 
it, a whole process happens before a cut is is uh, is uh, put in a certain before we decide which room will we put the cut and we have to like try them in one room to see if they would get along with all the cuts and then if they don't get along we try them in another room until until we find a place to put them so the more more cats are come in the more complex it gets because where, where what do you do with them where do you put them okay so also people could help us by visiting our website um either uh our facebook pages as well either come stay with us i mean every penny counts uh, to, the money goes from the accommodations back to the the animals as well or either uh, while they're on the island they could book a tour with us um uh, visit us and they could bring food for the animals and toys for the animals so there are so many ways that you could help so we appreciate anything anyone wants to do and don't forget to come visit us on the beautiful island of key cocker and don't forget pause <laughs>